Whether buying a home is something that you have done many times, or if this is something that you will do for your first time, I have seen many common home buying mistakes. So I want to cover the top three common home buying mistakes. I remember a time a client came to me and they were super excited. They had just been pre-approved for $500,000 through Navy Federal Credit Union. And I absolutely love Navy Federal Credit Union. I have them for my car note and I have them for banking. However, anytime clients come to me already pre-approved, I always ask them if they would mind getting a second opinion because you can get your credit pulled 400,000 times as long as it's within a 30 day period Period, it's only going to count as one hit towards your credit report. So why not? Why not shop around? Why not ensure you have the best possible terms and condition for your mortgage? I like to ensure my clients are getting the best deals. So this particular client was firm on Navy Federal Credit Union. I mean, he even went as far as to try to say that I was forcing him to go with another lender and I must be getting pay under the table, which was the furthest from the truth. I love my job and I have the best interest of the people who hire me to keep me in business. So when we went through the entire home buying process, we found a home, we put an offer on that home, and it came time for the estimate for closing. I always like to get an estimate so that we can know roughly what is going to be needed at the closing table. This particular client had a VA loan. Therefore, there was no down payment. It was only closing costs that was needed to be paid. And at the time, we were still in a seller's market. And when you're in a seller's market, majority of the time, the sellers are not gonna pay your closing costs. And so my client was responsible for his own closing costs. We received an LE, which is a loan estimate, and the cash to close was a whopping $14,968 to close this house through Navy Federal. So out of curiosity, I reached out to my preferred lender, gave her the address, had her run the numbers for closing fees. Do you know she came back with a cash to close estimate of $8,714 for the exact same house? I share that story to say there are many common home buying mistakes, but I would like to discuss the top three most common ones with you, so let's get into it. Hello, beautiful people. I am Kendra Conyers, a licensed real estate agent here in the Charlotte metro area. I would love if you could like, subscribe, and tune in every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for great information about the Charlotte market. I know you probably guessed it, but the first common home buying mistake is not shopping around for a mortgage that fits your needs. It is an exciting time to get pre-approved for a mortgage, but it is highly recommended to get a second or even third opinion. You want to shop around so that you can ensure you get the best rate, you want to ensure that you get the best fees, and you want to ensure that you get the best time frame needed for that lender to close. So for example, some lenders may need 45 days or more to close on a loan. The average lender will only need 30 days to close on a loan, and some lenders can even close on a loan in as little as 20 days. These factors are going to make a difference depending on what kind of market we are in. So for example, if we're in a seller's market, you need a lender who can close a deal as quick as cash. But if we're in a buyer's market, there's not so much of a need for pressure to close as quickly. However, you want to ensure that you are given the best possible fees and that you aren't having a high loan origination or any other type of hidden fees in that loan. The second most common home buying mistake is buying a new home before your old home is sold. I have personally worked with many people who were wanting to sell their house to either upgrade to a bigger home, sell their house to downgrade to a smaller home, or simply sell their home to buy a new house they seen across the street. I mean, seriously, I had a client call me to ask me if I can help them move to a beautiful new home they had seen. So I GPS the home and I found out it was literally in the neighborhood across the street from the neighborhood that they were currently living in. And we had just closed on that house about a year and a half prior. So whatever the case may be, in my opinion, it is better to sell your home first before buying a new home because the last thing you will want to do is to be stuck with two mortgage 
payment and you're not sure how long you may be paying for those two homes. The third common home buying mistake is not using professionals to assist you in all aspects of buying a home from a real estate agent to a mortgage lender, to a home inspector, to a lawyer and a reputable moving company. There are people who feel as if they can buy a home or sell a home without the help of a real estate agent. And that is so mind blowing to me for the simple fact that there are so many legalities and laws that go into purchasing and selling, which is more than likely the largest asset that people have, which is why I just do not understand those people who choose to opt out of professional help. And I see this more often with sellers because they want to avoid the real estate commission fee. I also see this with misinformed buyers who are looking to build a home. Please keep in mind that the builder and the builder's rep have the best interest of the builder. They do not have the best interest of the buyer. So whether you're building a home or buying a home, you always, always, always want a buyer's agent to represent you. You want someone who is on your side, on your team, advocating for you at all times. I've heard of builders trying to sway buyers from getting a buyer's agent representative because the builder simply does not want to pay the buyer's agent commission fee. Majority of the time, the seller or the builder is responsible for both agents commission fee. And that's the listing agent that works for them and the buyer's agent that works for you. Therefore, builders will rather just work directly with the buyer so that they don't have to compensate the buyer's agent. But that is in the best interest of that builder. It is not in the best interest of you, the consumer, the buyer. So keep that in mind. Also having a lender who does not mind explaining and advising you on the different loan types on the rates and really breaking down the number in a way that you understand the conditions and the terms of that mortgage. A home inspector is also a vital part of the home buying process. You want to get a home inspection regardless if the seller is willing to do repairs or not. You want to have a home inspector thoroughly check the condition of that property before you sign on the dotted line. Because closing constitutes acceptance of the property in its existing condition. Therefore, you are responsible of, for anything that is found after the sale of that home. Having a lawyer, which is also a real estate attorney, is beneficial for factors such as liens, mechanical liens, judgments, and things of that nature. You want to ensure you have a clear, marketable title at closing, and that's what your real estate attorneys do for you. Last, but certainly not least, is having a reputable moving company. I know sometimes people like to skip out on quality movers, or they feel like they can move it themselves, or hire some friends to move it, but at the end of the day, I am a big advocate in paying for convenience and peace of mind. Therefore, if that means setting aside a little bit more money for the convenience of having a company to move your belongings for you and or setting aside a little bit of money to hire a quality moving company so that your belongings are not lost or stolen or even broken in transit, that is really gonna be in your best interest at the end of the day. You'll definitely thank me later. Thanks so much for watching. Please visit my website at www.kendrakinders.com for more information about me or you can email me. My email is Kendra at KendraKinders.com if you need assistance in buying or selling a house. I'll talk to you soon.